Okay, so we have a question here from Harry, and it's how many whole numbers between 100 and 200 have exactly three divisors? So the basic idea is, let's say you were looking at the number 100, right? You're going to break it down into its factors. Well, you might not have thought of this, but its factors are really also its divisors. For example, I know that 1 times 100 is 100, so I'm going to start listing out all of my factors here. And I, I like to list them out like this, where the pairs that multiply to 100 are on opposite ends. So at the end, we have this nice little list that's ascending in order. So here we have 1 times 100 and 2 times 50, right? You see how the numbers are going up in order. 3 doesn't go into 100. 4 does. 4 times 25 is 100. 5 times 20. And 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 all do not go into 100, but 10 does. Right, and I'm just to say 10 times 10, or um, you can think of it as 10 squared, goes into 100. That depends how you're counting your factors here. Um, I would count that this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 unique factors, because 10 is repeated. I'm not going to count it twice. So one observation to make right away is that this number has 9 factors. And what does that mean? Well, that means it also has nine divisors. Now, divisors, I'm guessing in this case, refer to numbers that go evenly into 100. For example, if I take 100 and I divide it by any of its factors, let's say I divide it by 50, well, in that case, I'm getting 50's matching factor, which is 2. So 50 goes into 100 twice. And you can keep doing this. If, for example, 100 divided by 4 gives you 25. So these are the factors right here that multiply to make 100. So in other words, what you could do to solve this problem, and, and this might be something you realize right away, is that I'm going to look at all of the numbers between 100 and 200, right? There's 101 numbers in that set. I could list out all the factors of all the numbers, and then go back and just circle all the numbers that have three factors, because that means they have three divisors. However, you can imagine this would take an incredibly long time and be tedious. And and maybe you're developing that sense that there, there must be a better way, right? And that's, that's really what's so great about mathematics, is that there is a better way. There's always a more efficient way to deal with a problem. So let's look at a, a more efficient way of dealing with this problem. And the first step is to take a look at the wonderful and awesome group of prime numbers. And that might not be an immediately obvious connection because we always look at prime numbers in school and think, oh, those are numbers with exactly two factors. For example, two. It has two factors, one in itself, and, and three, and five, and seven, and eleven, and so forth. All these numbers have one thing in common. That is that they have one as a factor and itself. Um, notice we didn't list one, right? One is not prime. And there are lots of ways to discuss why you would not count one as prime. I would just say, to keep it simple, that uh, prime numbers have exactly two factors, one in itself, or two divisors. One has one divisor, it's itself. So so that's a little distinction right there as you move forward. So if, if that was the case, if we were asking you how many numbers have exactly two divisors, well then what you could do is just get all of the prime numbers between 100 and 200. But here, right, that's not what we're doing, we're looking for three divisors. And here's what's so wonderful. Um, so if we look at two factors or two divisors, and I said, what are those numbers? You could say, oh, they're the prime numbers, right? That means they're prime. Okay, and that means we get numbers like 2 and 3 and 5 and 7 and 11 and so forth. But then you have to ask, well, what kinds of numbers have three divisors? What would they look like? What's an example of a number with three divisors or factors? Well, the first number you probably would come across is the number 4. Now let's list out the factors of 4. That's what? Well, that's 1 times 4 and 2 squared. So here we have three distinct factors. So there's a number with three factors. And as you search for the next number with three factors, you might come across 9. Now 9 also has three factors, 1 and 9 and 3. So we start to list out these as well, right? So three divisors, these aren't prime, but so far, let's write these out, we have 4, and 9, and so forth. Now, if you're discovering this for yourself, I, I'm fairly confident that the next number you would find is the number 25. 
This also has three factors, and you might keep going with this pattern. Now when you line these up, take a look, what do you notice is happening here? And this is kind of interesting, I think. No, I should say mind-blowing, that there's a connection here. What's happening? What do you notice between 2 and 4 and 3 and 9 and 5 and 25? Can you guess what another number is with three divisors? Well, you might guess that the next number is 49. Why? What's happening here? Well, what you might notice is that if you take any prime number and you square it, 2 squared or 3 squared, right? Or 5 squared or 7 squared. What's going to happen? Well, you're going to get a number with exactly three factors. And that's, that's one of the wonderful things about prime numbers is that they're the building blocks of other numbers. I mean, there are many ways to talk about numbers, but here we can say that if you want to categorize numbers by their factors, their makeup, always go back to prime numbers. Prime numbers are like the DNA of other numbers. When you look at them and combine them in different ways, you get whole new groups of numbers. So here, right, what's happening is that we take prime numbers and square them, we get a number with three factors, or three divisors, right? Why does that make sense? Well, let's look at the number, um, just for a moment, the number six. Now, the six is not even on this list. I know that. We'll get to six in a moment. And in fact, let me, let me write down here, go to the next group, four divisors, because you never know how far you'll take this kind of, right? question. Well, you might jump to inclusions here and say, well, maybe then prime numbers to the third power is four divisors. But as you search for numbers with four divisors, you realize that six is a number with four divisors, right? If we list it out over here, let me list six out right here. If you look at six, it has one and six and two and three. So it's the, the pattern as you explore and go further into this is not as simple as that. Um, but we can get that, to that in another video. Here, we're just going to um, make make a connection. Why does it make sense that if you square a prime number, you get a, a number with three, div three factors, or three divisors? So my example is six, and then we'll go to some of the examples here. Six, I'm choosing six because I think it's easier to see. If you take two, multiply it by three, so two different prime numbers, you get six. So already you can see, okay, a prime, right, times another prime, where they don't equal each other, might give you this, this number with four divisors. And that's something we'll, we'll go into in another time, but that's, that's pretty much true. Uh, but moving forward, uh, here, what, what does this mean? Well, six is not prime. You know that right away. Why? Because we used these two numbers to make six. In other words, two and three, when you multiply them to make another number, both become factors of that number. So that's the idea. When you multiply numbers, they become factors of your product, right? Two and three are automatically factors of six, right? They made six. So let's go back to this connection here. How come, right, prime numbers squared gives you this other group of three divisors? Well, take two and multiply it by itself. You get four. So then what does that mean about four? Well, that means four has to have itself and one as a factor. That's automatic, right? Every number has itself and one as a factor. That's, that's a given. What's next? Well, we added one more distinct factor here, two. I mean, we repeated it twice, but it's a repeat. So every time we square a prime number, say three times three, we get nine. Well, what about nine? Nine automatically has one and nine, but then one other factor, the prime number that we used. So we're creating these, this group with three factors each time because we're squaring the primes. In other words, we're, giving these, we're making numbers with one extra factor, the prime number squared. Right, nine has one in itself, and the prime number squared, a third factor. So does four. So that this whole group is being created. And now all we have to do, you might feel slightly intimidated by this, you thinking, oh, I have to go through all the numbers between 100 and 200 and see which of them are prime numbers squared. But, but this is what's so wonderful about squaring numbers, right? Look how these are growing so fast. And I don't think this will take a long time to solve because what's going to happen here is that you can square 11 your prime number, that's 121, and that's in your range. What number do we square next? Well, we're just squaring the next prime number. That's 13 squared. And that equals 169. And that also fits in there. Uh, we don't use 14, and we don't use 15, because those are both not prime, and those are both, and, and you, you know you don't have to go any further, because 15 already takes you into 225. It's, it's outside of the range. So there are two numbers of three factors that lie in this range right here, 
uh, it's just these two prime numbers squared. Now you might be wondering, how do we know there are not other numbers with exactly three factors? Well, that requires to go deeper into this pattern right here, and maybe we will on another video. I just don't want to talk about it too long here. But you can keep going. Uh, but be rest assured, if you're looking for numbers with three divisors, just square prime numbers. Those are the numbers that fit this category. And now the numbers of four divisors, you might discover already this idea of prime numbers being building blocks. In other words, if I, if I take two, multiply it by three, I get a number with four divisors or four factors, right? Two and three are both factors of six. You can multiply them to make six, and six also has one in itself. It's four factors. You can, might guess then, oh, if I combine these two, I get six. If I combine these two, I get 10, right? And that also fits in the group. If I combine these two numbers here, three and five, I get 15. Four and seven, I get 14. And it seems that numbers with four divisors are just different combinations of prime which is essentially true. However, don't forget, and this is where things get complicated, but there is a way to resolve all this. If you take the number two and multiply it by four, you get eight, and that also fits in this group. So you can imagine that three times four would also fit in this group, and so forth. So, that, so as we go up into different factor groups, we need to find a way that, that defines all of this magic, that, that all of these different combinations of prime numbers can be defined in a simple formula, and it can. But we'll get there in another video. So I hope this helps for now. Um, thanks a lot.